What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Fauci Cinema. Of course you know who I am. I am Fauci and today I took a poll and put it out on my community page on YouTube and asked the viewers what movie they wanted me to do a review for next and the movie they came up with was 1988's Pumpkinhead. So I think that's a perfect movie to get into the Halloween spirit with. So without further ado, Let's call upon the pumpkin head. Here we go. Welcome back to the channel. Once again, I appreciate all the love and support from each and every one of you. If you have not already, definitely feel like hitting that like. Share the video if you're feeling crazy. Hit the subscribe button. It means the world to me on the rise to 2,000 subscribers, so I would love to get there by the end of October. That would be a great Halloween present to myself. So let's make it happen and share the Fauci with the world, ladies and gentlemen. But on today's review, I am talking about 1988's Pumpkinhead. The year of my birth gave us the year of the Pumpkinhead. Don't say I have a big head either, because that's just not right. But Pumpkinhead stars the, the horror veteran Lance Henriksen, Florence Scheffler, directed by Stan Winston. Okay, now this is a movie that I feel, I don't know if the term underrated suits it, uh, maybe under talked about. Uh, I don't hear a lot of people talk, get talking about this movie, there's not a lot of buzz. Um, I don't know if it got lost in 1988 because of Halloween 4, um, with... Friday the 13th Part 7, uh, Child's Play. I don't know if it just kind of fell under the rug or what, but Pumpkinhead is a fantastic movie that has definitely got the creepiness, it got the atmosphere, it got the mood, it got like Halloween time vibes, even though it's not specifically Halloween time in the film, I don't believe. Uh, but the leaves and the environment that the movie is filmed in, it makes it seem like it's a perfect movie for the Halloween time season. Um, it includes a witch, so I mean, don't really get much more Halloween than that. And the main, the villain is a pumpkin head, for pretty much. Um, but uh, the story goes in this film. Obviously, this is going to be a spoiler review. This movie is 33 years old, so expect the spoiler. You have been warned. Uh, so, pumpkin head is, tells the story of you know a group of I don't know. I guess they're young adults. Uh, looks like they were going on a, cro on a trip with their dirt bikes for like a dirt bike competition or something like that. Uh, they stop at this, you know, hick, ta hick town. You know, there's not really much there. There's like one convenience store and, and that's about it. Um, and that's where we find Lance Hendrickson's character and his son. Um, it's the only thing he has left in this world. Uh, they, they're buying some stuff in the store and then as they're doing that, uh, some of the guys are out there dirt biking and whatnot and the little boy wanders out there in the field chasing after his dog and the unspeakable happens the guy coming down from a jump lands on the sun and kills him and then in jerk douchebag fashion he takes off with his girlfriend and gets the hell out of there because he's been drinking and he's definitely gonna go to prison so why not hit and run kill somebody and then leave because you won't go to prison for that when you're caught either um, the one guy stays because he He's obviously heartbroken and crushed that this happened. So he stays to take care of the little boy until the father arrives and then, you know, go, tells him the story that it was an accident and whatever, but the dad doesn't say anything, but you know he's not buying it. So he's heard legend around town from some of the other people that there is this witch that has these magical powers, lives deep in the woods. So what better idea than to resurrect your son? Because it worked in all the other movies they tried to do this in, right? You know, come back as a zombie. Come back as a killer kid, like in Pet Cemetery, even though that came a little bit after. It never ends up well. But when a father loses his child, the only person left in the world that he loves, uh, he has to resort to these kind of measures to, to you know, to make them pay in order to try to bring his son back to life. Uh, the witch that he goes to visit, deep, deep in the woods, creepy ass witch. Like when I think of a witch, that's what I think of, and that's what I never want to meet in real life because that witch. The way she looked, the way she acted, the spells, what the powers she had. You don't ever want to mess with that. But she gave him some advice. He had to go out into the woods, uh, go to this cemetery and dig up this P. 
piece that she needed to help get revenge on these on these kids. What he didn't know is that it was this little tiny thing. It's where people pumpkin head is what they call him, and he looks like he has a pumpkin on his head. It's like this little thing, and then she casts this spell on him on, on the creature, and then it grows into the huge pumpkin head that we know and love. And he seeks only one thing: to kill those who have wronged the person who had summoned him. Uh, however, as Lance Hendricks' character throughout this film knows, his name is Ed Harley, so I can stop calling him Lance Hendrickson. Uh, Ed, he, the only way to get rid of the pumpkin head then is to uh, either be killed or commit suicide. Um, because the pumpkin head kind of started to form and look like Ed Harley. Uh, because it was driven on rage and revenge and Obviously, that's not the right way to go about doing this, even though the act that caused Pumpkinhead to come obviously was heartbreaking and hard to get through, but it's not the right way to go about doing it. Um, the Pumpkinhead creature itself, one of the creepiest creatures I've ever seen on film. I know there's a bunch of sequels to the original. I've never seen them um, yet. I'm planning on watching them. I've heard they're not very good besides maybe the second one. But the creature... Fantastic practical effects looks amazing. Long fingers, claws, his head, the, the sound effects that come whenever the pumpkin head is around, uh, the lightning in the background. It all works and sets up for a very creepy vibe. And a scene in the film that I loved a lot actually was whenever he was walking, the pumpkin head got to this like abandoned church because they didn't think the evil could come on sacred ground. Pumpkin head don't care about that. He walks right through that church as the lightning's flashing in the background through the windows and the doorway. It looks amazing. Uh, the cinematography is fantastic. He goes in there looking at all the crosses and stuff and he just starts breaking them and, and, and smashing the crosses because obviously this is pure evil. This pumpkin head is from hell. and He's having nothing to do with the gracious, the graciousness of the Lord and, and, and the good in this world. Uh, so I really love that scene. If you have not seen this movie, you gotta go check it out. It, I highly recommend it. You're gonna have a good time with it. Uh, the characters, obviously, we don't get to spend that much time and develop with them. Uh, just that we know the main like bike dude is obviously a douchebag, and that he's the reason that Pumpkinhead has come out to kill the rest of the group, even though they had nothing to do with it. Um, the one couple was very sympathetic. They were just trying to get the little boy better and, and try to make you know the main guy pay and, and turn himself in for what he's done but that doesn't matter because they were all a group and Pumpkinhead was not having it um, the other characters in this film was like this group of redneck children and they were they had this pumpkin head story and they were singing it and scaring all the other kids this other little kid I don't know if they were purposely trying to make these people seem obviously like they were dirt poor and they were all black and dirty and like they never take a shower. I, I mean, I guess that was setting the kind of atmosphere that they were building in this town, but they could have been a little bit cleaner, you know what I mean? Like, they look sleazy, they look disgusting. Like they haven't showered in years. Um, but I guess if you don't have the money and that's how you live your life, I guess you really don't have the option to you know, personal hygiene. But I did like the main older kid who led Ed to the witch because he was afraid of the witch, so he wouldn't go the rest of the way. So he just went halfway and then ran back home because he knew what that witch was and he didn't want nothing to do with the witch. But obviously, without the witch being killed, this could happen over and over and over again and people know the, the story and the legend and, and whatnot. The kills in this movie are fantastic. Um, Great practical effects. Uh, this isn't no CGI fest. This is all legit. Uh, the kills are great. Uh, the story is great. The atmosphere is great. The pumpkin head himself is fantastic. Ed Harley, you feel for him throughout this movie because you know you can understand what he's going through. He lost his son, looking for revenge. It, it's it's perfect. It, it makes sense. And then as the revenge is taking place, you know he. The feelings of remorse come back over him and he feels guilty for what he has done. So the only way out is for him to kill himself and in turn that takes away the pumpkin head and the pumpkin head dies as well. And then the witch just has to bury the pumpkin head back um, to the cemetery again for somebody else to dig it up. 
But like I said, everything about this movie I love. I absolutely adore this film. I don't hear it talked about enough. I said on Killer Flicks that it might have been over underrated. I'm going to say it's probably where it should be. I just think a lot of people, it's under-talked about, somebody said in the comments, and I think they're correct. It is definitely under-talked about. It needs to be talked about more. It is a great film. Um, if they ever would remake the Pumpkinhead movie, then it would just turn into a CGI fest. The monster would not look great at all. Um, Stan Winston, obviously, he's uh, the special effects guy. He uh, made involved with masks for Halloween H2O, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the sound for this movie is great. I just can't say enough good about this film. So if you're into a story about revenge and the father, you know, taking, finding a way to get revenge, but then coming full circle in the end, realizing that he made a mistake and had to take it upon himself to end this revengeful killing spree by the pumpkin head, then you're really gonna dig this movie. Um, even if I spoiled it for you, you still need to see it and, and see the visuals and just get immersed to the world of the pumpkin head and, and what it brings to the table. So if I had to give this a rating, um, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and give this a four out of five. I know that's high for me, but I love pretty much everything about this movie. And it is a big part of my childhood. I watched it a lot growing up, so that nostalgia probably has a lot going for it. But definitely go out, check it out. There's a really beautiful still book out there, Blu-ray. I would personally go buy that if you have not seen this movie. You might as well just get it over with because once you watch it one time, you're going to watch it every year around Halloween time. I guarantee you that. Uh, so hopefully you liked what I had to say about Pumpkinhead. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you seen it? Have you not seen it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let's have a discussion. I want to hear from you guys. And don't forget, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button because it makes sure that my videos can get out there to more people so others can enjoy what you guys are enjoying. Um, hopefully it is enjoyable, right guys? But stay tuned, a lot of fun shit coming in October, 31 Days of Miners is starting very, very soon, so actually the end of this week. <laughs> so definitely stay tuned for that, and if you have any requests you want me to do during 31 Days of Miners, leave that in the comments below as well. So without further ado, don't go seeking a witch, don't get the pumpkin head resurrected because then you're going to have to kill yourself anyway, so it was all for nothing. But other than that, you guys have a scary day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Pumpkin, pumpkin.